respiratory depression from some metrics. But it's, it's a very unusual kind of recession uh, because it was caused by a disease. And I hear a lot of people talking about the new normal, that we're in the new normal, this is the, the new normal. That is not true. You're not in the new normal. You're in the new phase of business. You're in a new wave of business, but it is temporary. The wave is the virus. And the virus, if you look at viruses in general, and I, I looked all the way back to 1918, and I looked at the economy related to the virus, and economic damage done by viruses is relatively short-lived. The collapse we had in 08 and 09, that was a long-lived, typical economic crash. There are a lot of reasons why that happened. Uh, we had things going well, the economy was doing well, housing was doing well, we were on track to be a little better than uh, we were the year before in 18, we were gonna finish uh, 20, uh, better than 19, uh, and all that, all that in March, all that ended. It came to a, a crash when the virus started hitting really hard and hitting really uh, deadly. So when I say, keep well, I mean it, you need to think about well, because the number one thing to remember is COVID-19 is killing people every day. And if you think it won't happen to you and in your corner, you're wrong. I, I, I haven't had it directly in my family, but I've got three dear friends of mine who are all lost. I shouldn't say that, that's not true. My, uh, my brother-in-law's wife's father just passed away from COVID-19 and he lives in wow. Carolinas. So, um, it can happen to you. So this, this phase, the, the virus phase is about survival, survival, survival of, of your personal body and your family and your friends, your clients, but it's also about survival of your business. I don't need to tell you there are businesses that are gone already and there are businesses that will be gone. They're trying to hold on and businesses are dying and some of them are very big very big, like the travel and leisure industry, uh, airlines, uh, there are big businesses in serious trouble. But there are also very small businesses, yours and mine. A lot of realtor businesses are in trouble. Uh, and there are businesses that are gonna die. And uh, this group of people on this call, you're not those people, but you do need to be clear about what you need to be thinking and what you need to be doing and preparing for. So. Back to my bio, so my wife and I had been in the business four years and we were doing really well. We lived in Miami and we had a home, a new home by the water uh, down by Blackstone Marina in South Dade County. And uh, in 1992, August 24th, Hurricane Andrew hit us and hit us direct, head on. Uh, everybody uh, knows or everybody might remember it, it was famously uh, destroyed Homestead, Florida. Homestead is inland, and between the Atlantic Ocean and Homestead was where I lived. And like, oh like most agents, my wife and I lived and worked in the same area, so not only was our home destroyed over our heads, we lost one or two cars, every pending was gone, every listing was gone. Uh, the real estate company we worked out of was in an office complex, and every single one of the buildings in the complex was gone. So every tree that was standing was gone, every stoplight was gone, business signs were gone, everything. It was over. And if you recall, those of you that are old enough, uh, that was the biggest natural disaster ever in US history until Katrina came along uh, two decades later and took that title away from Andrew. So we lived through that. I've lived through two other hurricanes in Florida, lost a house in the hurricane. Uh, my wife uh, says it's me. They're following me. <laughs> I say, well, you're married to me. So. <laughs> but um, my point is I've been through these ups and downs. And here's, and here's what I know. They all go like this. They all go like this. The bad times peak and then they go down. The good times peak and then they go down. They all go like this. And what I know, and this is what a lot of the top agents in Gary's group uh, we've had a lot of discussions about this issue. <laughs> when times are good, real estate schools fill up. Every idiot wants to get into real estate because it looks so easy. And then they get in it and say the famous saying, it's a lot harder than I thought it was. <laughs> yeah. 
And, uh, and yet when a crash hits, when things get really hard, economic crash, virus crash, a whole lot of the family sits on the sidelines. And a lot of them are, are waiting to see what happens. And this is going on right now in your community. Uh, and when that happens, top agents know when it gets harder to make the business happen, that's when the pros step up and take market share because the agents that you're competing with, a percentage of them are waiting. And when your competitors are waiting, you attack the market. And I really mean this. You go for it really big and you go for it right now. We have two waves we're going to deal with. The first wave is the virus. I was talking to David uh, uh, right before the call, and he said that you are in uh, level two of opening, but they put off level three because you have increasing cases in the state of the virus. And I think that's smart. You got to, again, you got to stay well. Yep. But during that wave, there will be an end to it where it'll be going, even if it's we got to wait till there's a vaccine, there will be an end to it. And then we'll be in the, in the more important way, and that is once the virus has passed us, once the schools are open, the stadiums are open, and we, realtors, can have meetings of more than 100 people, when, when, that, when that's all back again, then we're going to be surveying what kind of economic damage has been done. And the economic damage that's been done is going to be significant, but the question of how fast we recover will be tied to how much damage is done. And the biggest problem we've got right now is the unemployment. And once the virus has passed us, can those people get jobs again or can't they? And I don't know the answer to that. And I don't think any of you know, it's gonna be about stimulus packages. It's gonna be about companies being aggressive and growing. I mean, Amazon is growing like mad right now. There are other businesses that are growing like mad right now. Uh, but most businesses are not growing. So I don't know what's going to happen. But here's what I do know. Underneath the virus wave and then the economic recovery wave, people always buy and sell houses. And they always rent houses. Because the truth about what we do is it's essential. And there are some states that said real estate was not essential and it was a farce. That is, that is a lie. We are essential because there's two things people need every day. They need food and they need shelter. And, and when, you, when your business is built around supplying something that everybody you know utilizes, everybody utilizes it. Even homeless people will go to the homeless shelter. And I can raise money for the homeless shelter uh, cause and I can help get a different building and I can help find the building or help build a building for the homeless shelter. I mean, we are involved in housing and everybody needs it. So there's money to be made, ladies and gentlemen, and people will move no matter what the interest rate is, no matter what the economy is, if they can get a loan and they're having their third child and they live in a three bedroom house, they're going to move. If they get a divorce, they're going to sell. If they get married and they're both renting and they want to buy a house, they're going to buy a house. I mean, you all know this. This births, deaths, job loss, job creation, people buy, sell, sell, buy all the time. The challenge you've got is how many of those people are now in your pipeline, active buyers or sellers? Because most of us in March, our pipeline started collapsing in front of us. The people you thought we're gonna be your big wave for the year. I don't know your market, but in the country, the second and third quarter normally are the quarters of the most listings, the most contracts, and the most closings. If that's true for you, then these are your big quarters that you were, in theory, gonna make three quarters of your money in six months out of the year was gonna come in these quarters. That literally means there are people you know, and people you don't know, but people you know that were going to put their home on the market, sell it, find another one, and buy it, and they should have been in your pipeline, and now some of them are still doing it. Some of them are saying, I don't know, I don't know, and some of them are saying, absolutely not, we're gonna wait till all this is over. And you need to be rebuilding your pipeline. Uh, what we've been doing for almost all of April and most of May, 
was every morning at 8 a.m. I'm talking about my team now. Um, everybody's been on the phone, everybody, all agents, because we couldn't go out. We were at stay at home. Uh, they've been on the phone with their met databases and they're talking to people uh, about a care call. You know, what's going on? How can I help you? And I would like to help anyone you know that's lost a job and is concerned about their mortgage. I would like to help anyone you know that needs to move but is concerned about the, the safety issues. Anyone that has questions about the real estate transaction and COVID-19, I'd like to help them. And then you should be talking to your sphere, I'm sorry, your pipeline, and your pipeline, the question would be, uh, David, you and I talked last fall and you said you were gonna be selling in the spring and moving, and I checked with you in February and you said, yep, the game is still on, we're gonna put the house in the market in May and move no later than by July. Is that still on? Are you still feeling that way? Do you still want to do that? And if you have questions, let's talk about it. And if not, if you think it's too risky, I've got little kids, my wife's a diabetic, I just, we can't risk it, we're not going to do it, then I'm going to ask you this question. So when are you going to do it? Are you going to do it when the virus is gone? Are you going to do it when uh, job unemployment is at 4% or less. I mean, what's your benchmark here? What makes you comfortable buying and selling again? And what does that look like to you? If they tell you it's when the virus is over, you have to ask them, describe what that looks like to me. Is that when the schools are open? The colleges are open? Is that when the stadiums are open? 80,000 people can get into a stadium. What does it look like to you when the virus is over and I'm ready to buy a house again? And whatever they tell you, you now tag them and they're back in your pipeline, but it's a date down the road now, it's not now. So you should be rebuilding your pipeline and you should be connecting with care calls to your sphere. And then you need to be going after new business. And there's been a, a big gift, gift given to you. And, it, and it's a gift, it was given to you. And the gift was the stay at home order. And it, with the stay at home orders, we now have millions and millions of people that are sitting at home and they're working and they're also surfing the web, baby. They're surfing the web. And because they're surfing the web, you should be messaging them and driving them to watch videos because you need to be doing a lot of videos right now, a lot of videos. I do at least one a week, every week. And the reason you need to do videos is simply this. A lot of what people are doing while they're working at home is they are monitoring their inbox and they are watching videos, a lot of videos. Uh, I'm sure a bunch of you are aware of this. It's been now, it's been now two months. Uh, in March, at the end of March, beginning of April, uh, YouTube came out and said due to the abundant streaming of video, we are no longer capable of streaming high definition. So from this point forward, until this traffic dies down, we will only be streaming in standard definition. Now, when you heard that, if you heard it, when you heard that, you should have said, I got to get video messaging going. I've got to get it going now. And you need to get it going now. It's still not too late because most people are still at stay at home orders and you need to get messaging through videos. I'd recommend you do it on Instagram or Facebook. You can do videos on, I'm sorry, Instagram or YouTube. You can do it on Facebook, but you still need to link them up to Instagram or to YouTube. And the simple reality of that is Google owns YouTube and Facebook owns Instagram and you're gonna get extra credit if you post the videos on one of those platforms and then still work on the platform that they own. And there's a variety of reasons why that matters, but I'm not gonna get into it. But you need to be understanding going forward, a lot of your clients, because they've been working at home on a Zoom platform or Google or whatever, but they've been doing what we're doing right now, and they've actually gotten quite comfortable with it. They're having meetings with four or five people. They're looking at charts and graphs that are being shared. They're reviewing documents and they're making business decisions. And this is changing the way people think about having a Zoom consultation with a realtor.
We don't need to meet in the conference room. We don't need to meet at their house. We need to have a Zoom consultation first, and then we'll decide if we're gonna go into business together, and then we're gonna go either look at the listing or show the property. And this is a reality now in our world. We find that we're offering, we can go back to the conference room right now where I am in Florida. So we can meet them, and we meet them at their home, we meet them in the conference room at the office, but what we're saying is, Bob and Mary, love to meet with you on Thursday. I can do it at 10 or four, and we can do this as a Zoom call where you can be wherever you need to be at those times, or we can get together in my conference room or in your home, which do you prefer? And my agents are finding it's about 60% now are saying, why don't we do a Zoom call? No. Now, they don't realize it, but what's happened is, if you read the One Thing book, how many, how many days does it take to create a habit? 66. In the one thing book, it's 66 days. Well, now people have spent more than, than that time. They've spent about 75 days learning to do business like this. And because they're now comfortable with it, you need to offer it. And here's the most important thing about offering. We don't, Keller Williams is tracking all of this data. And I know you know they are because they're all over this. But the people that are doing Zoom consultations with buyers and sellers are discovering two things. Number one, the consultations are shorter. And number two, the conversion rates are higher. Yep. So if you knew that a Zoom consultation with a buyer or seller would take less time and they'd be more likely to sign with you than if you were face to face, why would you not be all over that? I mean, that's a massively important trend, trend, and it's a trend to work. And we're finding our buyers are very comfortable and actually some of them prefer to look at videos of the properties that are on their eight or 10 property list after we do a consultation. They'd like to look at all the videos and now pick just two, maybe three to look at and they don't want to look at anymore. Now, that's pretty amazing when you think about that. So now the showings are taking less time because we're not showing as much property. And for about a month and a half in my market, we weren't showing property until it was under a fully executed contract. So they literally had to pick the house only from videos and driving through the neighborhoods and making sure they like the neighborhood, they like the neighbors, watch the videos, and then make a choice and make an offer. And then we would make the offer subject to them having 36 hours or 48 hours to tour the property. So I think the mindset of the public, and I've heard Gary talk about this recently, the mindset of the public about how we do business has shifted because the way they've been doing business has shifted. And I hope that makes sense to you because that's exactly what's going on and we're seeing it in our own business. I see some of you nodding your heads. So uh, going forward, um, what the new normal is going to be is in, in January and February, we all did business like this. And then March came along, the stay at home hit, and we had to do business like this. We were forced into it. And the new normal is not that. The new normal is this. The new normal is offering, would you like to meet together? Or would you like to have a Zoom call? And you need to make that your new normal. And that means this platform or a similar platform, you need to get very good at doing the consultation using the share feature, using the whiteboard feature. You're gonna need to get really good at showing graphs and charts. I know when it first started, what our, what our team was doing was taking the pre-listing package and simply using the share feature and going through the pre-listing package pages. The problem with that, a lot of you are on a laptop and that doesn't scale to the screen on a laptop. So then you have to do this blowing it up and it gets very awkward and very slow and it doesn't work. So you've got to literally redo your materials to have simple, powerful, legible graphs and charts. You need to talk about things utilizing the technology that you expect them to be on, which is going to be a smartphone or a laptop, and you need to scale everything to that. And you need to get comfortable with the whiteboard function, how to type on the whiteboard in front of them and assimilate. So tell me why it is you need a, quote, big backyard. And then they start talking and you start typing. 
and build a wants and needs analysis. This is not going away. This change is not going away. I'm convinced of it because of the number of people we have now that say they would prefer to do the Zoom call and it's over half of our clients now. Now I'm in the capital city of Florida, Tallahassee. So we have a very educated base and we have people that are online all day long, both at universities and in state government. So we might be trending that way just because of that. But I can tell you, I'm hearing this from around the country too. So um, the new normal is gonna be, you all need to be a much more digital based business and the way you think and the way you present. And I think you're going to find that it's, it's kind of funny. I've thought about this and talked about this with my wife, Rebecca. Um, our, this was our year to adopt command full scale and get into it and really take it and take us as a company to another level in the industry. And now the virus hit. And we were all shoved into the digital world much more than a lot of people wanted to be shoved into. But here you are, here you are. And if you're not utilizing, if you're not utilizing all the command, but if you're not moving into getting to all the command, you're just not paying attention to how bad you need to adopt technology. And particularly the marketing function and the campaigns, um, it's just amazing what we're doing. Uh, we've been posting, now we, we've had, uh, a lot of you know these tools, we've had Boomtown for decades. Literally when, when they started, we signed up with Boomtown. I've had multiple accounts in multiple cities for expansion. I mean, I've been using that tool a long time. We know what our costs are, we know what our yield is, and using command, we're able to generate leads from about 35 cents up to about a dollar 50. Um, no matter what we're doing, platforms, whatever we're doing, they're running somewhere between 35 cents and a dollar 50. And that is a huge savings over the $50,000 a year we were spending on one Boomtown account. Right. And I'm telling you, the, the way you get business today is talking to people or through the internet. And if you look at what a lot of large teams are doing today, they're mastering internet lead generation and they have people paid to be on the phone all day long. Also known as ISA, OSA, whatever you wanna call them, they're telemarketers. So right. the big game, the big game is talking to people and internet lead generation. And I'm telling you, it's a digital world. We are just like Macy's as an industry. We're, an, we're antiquated, we're not up to speed, and we're battling with Zulo, Julio, Fulio, Realtor.comio, all those tech companies who've been doing it better than we've been doing it, and we've been losing ground to them in terms of lead generation. I mean, they've gutted the industry of 20, 30, 40% of the money that used to go to agents. They've gutted it, and they've been giving it Never mind. So uh, the point is, this is your time to wake up and realize the consumer wants it. They're all on the internet. And the gap between them being on the internet and you is you're being on the internet properly and then you following up with phone calls. And for the people that aren't on the internet, it's about phone calls, FaceTime, and mail. So I think going forward, the thing for you to be doing is building out command. Uh, our team spends one hour a day working in command. We're not 100% there, but here, here's, here's a very important truth. If you want something done, you have to give time to it. Time. And the failure of teams or single agents, the failure to time block command time on a daily basis keeps you from adopting it. It keeps you. The one thing that's holding you back is your failure to put time into adopting. And when you try to adopt something new, the time spent early on is the most aggravating, frustrating time, right? When you're learning to ride a bicycle, the very first day and the next couple of days, it's aggravating and frustrating and you skin your knees and you hate bicycle riding. I remember learning to swim. I swore to my mother, my father was trying to drown me. <laughs> He was trying to teach me how to swim. 
And you all know what happens, you know, a week, a month, two months later, all you want to do is ride that bike or all you want to do is go to the pool and swim. And I'm telling you, the people that are ahead of most of KW agents and adopting a lot of what command has are loving it and they're living it and it works. So I think going ahead, your plan should be, I'm going to need to talk to more people. I'm going to need to have a presence like I've never had on the internet. And I would key videos in that equation. Videos, videos, videos. I can't say that enough. Videos. And then I think you need to be serious about six hours a day in your time block. I think you need to have six hours of an eight hour day time block. And one hour of that a day is command until you've got it working the way you want it working. It's never going to happen unless you put time into it, and it needs to be sequential time, meaning you need to work on it for an hour a day, and then tomorrow you pick up where you were and you work on it again for another hour. The next day, you pick up where you ended the day before, and when you start keeping on track of, of something you're trying to learn, you'll start to learn it faster and faster, and boom, it'll start to happen. And what I'm seeing in my office is, uh, Rebecca and I, I'm sitting in my Panama City Beach office. So if you want any Florida Gulf property, I've got some for you here. But um, uh, I'm sitting here in this office. We have 800 people across North Florida, and I'm seeing most of my agents are not putting time sequentially into command. Mm -hmm. They'll give it an hour or two, mm -hmm. say it doesn't work, and then don't touch it for a week or 10 days. Yep. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. So I've ranted enough, 30 minutes, so I'm going to stop. And uh, Jeff, have you been monitoring any of the chat? I see there's some there, but I haven't been looking. So are there any questions? Um, uh, we, had, we had someone ask if, uh, if the interest rates were counterbalancing the uh, uh, poor economic climate, if, if that's where the stability was coming from and kind of what your thoughts were on that. Well, my, my thoughts are, number one, and we already discussed this, there are people who last year, last fall, were committed that this spring and this summer, they were going to put their home on the market, buy one to buy, and they were going to sell and buy, and this was their time. Right. And there's a percentage of those people, and realize people buy or sell real estate without regard to the economic factors of which interest rates are one. People bought home, I bought a home at 16% interest. My first home, it was like, I don't know, just I could afford the payment according to the bank, so we bought it. I didn't, I didn't really care. So I, I think interest rates are incredibly important because they affect affordability. And incomes rise very slowly, historically, but housing prices go up and down, right? Irrespective of that to some degree. But um, I think interest rates are helping us do the business we're doing. But I never forget that in, in the resale market, in the collapse in 08, uh, we had the best year ever in 05, 7.2 million housing units were sold. We're still nowhere near that. Uh, this year, we were, quote, going to get to about 5.2, and this was going to be the best year since the collapse. So we're still a long way away from that year. But in the collapse, we went from 7.2 million down to 5 million. So that was a huge collapse, right? Uh, big, about a third of the housing market collapsed. But here's the issue. Of that collapse, 90% of that collapse was new construction because new construction collapsed all over the country. And resales only fell off about 12%. So the resale market is alive and well no matter what because of what we talked about earlier. So. I wouldn't worry too much about interest rates. Their fabulous affordability when we went into this was very strong. It was one of the best affordability index ratings of any market uh, in, in recent history because of the interest rate and the fact that people had gotten raises. Uh, they weren't big, but they'd gotten raises over the last two years. That meant affordability was dynamite. So I don't think that's the issue. I think the overall issue is jobs and how well the economy is doing overall. Uh, I think that's a bigger issue. Uh, the virus 
all of this stuff together goes into one index. There's one index that matters most about people buying and selling houses, and it is the consumer confidence index. Right. And that index has more to do with people buying or selling houses than anything. And that index basically is a statement about how people feel about their future, their future. And right now that's been falling. And if people lose confidence in their individual futures, they stop buying and selling houses. Right. And that happened, but remember in the resale market, that happened in the big collapse, but resale still only fell by 12%. The overall market fell by 30 plus percent, but it was mostly new construction. Right. Right? I, I think about this all the time. I think about it. it we have, we have 5,000, I'm talking about my team. We have 5,700 past clients. 5,700 past clients. If you take 365 days of the year and divide that into that, we have over 100 people every day having a deed anniversary date. And wow. what I know is every year you live in your house, you're that much closer to selling that house. Yep. Right? And I know if I talk to you on every deed anniversary date and say, Keith, do you remember how you bought 1515 Smith Street? And you'll go, uh, yeah, you know, we uh, sat down with you and chatted and then we uh, showed, you showed us some houses and we narrowed it down to two and we picked one. That's how we got Smith Street. That's right. That's exactly right, Keith. What we did was uh, technically from my side as a consultant to you, we did a wants and needs analysis and we compared what you wanted and what you needed and the money you were willing to spend to the market. And we came up with, I believe it was eight properties. And the best one on that was Smith Street, meeting your wants, your needs, and your money. And that's why you bought that. And so here's why I'm calling you today, Keith. If we did a wants and needs analysis today, would the house still be Smith Street? <clears throat> and if not, maybe we should set a time to get together through a Zoom call and do a buyer consultation. And let's talk about, is it time for you to move? Because if you haven't heard, interest rates are incredible. And it is a great time to be buying real estate right now. Because some buyers you would commit, you would be uh, competing with, have pulled back out of the market due to the COVID-19 virus. And that gives a buyer a better position today than you had just six months ago. So it's a great time to talk. When would you like to schedule that consultation, Keith? Right now. <laughs> there you go, baby. There you go. Well, your missus can join us on a Zoom call so we can do it wherever you guys are. It doesn't matter. Let's just get it going. So I think that's kind of the mindset, Jeff, is uh, I don't care about interest rates. I don't care about the economy. I have this care for there are people that are going to buy and sell without regard to what's going on. I need to find them. I need to talk to them. And yep. I'll do business if that's my mindset. Love it. I don't know if I answered the question. But. That's, good. That's good. So it's, it sounds like, uh, so a lot, of, a lot of times we get a big group like this. It's like people want action items. And what I'm hearing is intentional time. If you want something changed, you got to dedicate time to it, right? Yeah. And then uh, know your Zoom, your digital platform, be an expert in it so you can navigate it efficiently and clearly. Yeah. Uh, what else? And talk to people. Get on the phone. Talk to people, get in front of them. Yep. I, again, six hours of an eight-hour day. If I looked at your calendar, it ought to be blocked out. And of those six hours, an hour, hour and a half is calling your sphere. It depends on the scale of your business and how big your operation is. I mm. mean, I have people that don't do anything, but every day they're calling our past clients on anniversary dates. That's it. You know, it's really simple. It's not complicated. But it is your sphere, and then it's time with strangers, too. If you can't sit down and spend an hour, and when I say talk, I understand talk is on the phone. It could be face-to-face, -face, but that's not leverage. It could be on the phone, it could be email, and it could be text. And okay. it's, a, it's a qualified talk when you're passing information back and forth. And my, 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 both of my sons and my daughters prefer to communicate with text. With text. Yeah. 
I'll never forget my son. He taught me a lesson. I, I would call him. I'd say, hey, it's dad, give me a call. I would call him. Hey, it's dad, give me a call. I would call him. Dad, and then I'd see him at home. I'd say, How, why, didn't you, why didn't you call me? I left a voicemail message. I tried to get you. And he said this to me several times before it sunk in. And he looked at me and he said, dad, if you want to talk, send me a text. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> And finally sunk in. The modality for him is not voicemail. He doesn't check his voicemail. He doesn't give a rest. But to you about voicemail, you text him if you want to talk and he'll talk to you, right? I think we have a lot of clients like that and we, we aren't aware of it. I, I think uh, texting for us is a great lead generation. When we capture phone numbers on the internet, we get better response by texting them instead of calling them and leaving a voicemail. It's exactly like my son. If That's you start incredible. texting people that you get their number off a sign call or an internet lead, you're going to get better response than if you call them. Period. Period. And that's our experience across the board, all demographics. We're literally getting better responses to text. So, so uh, it is about an hour. I'll just bottom line. It's an hour on the phone with Mets and an hour on the phone with strangers and an hour on command. And that's three hours of an eight hour day right there. Boom, boom, boom. And part of the command thing is when you're on the phone with those people for two hours, you should be on command inputting new data in their file, right? So you're right. going to be on it anyway. You don't ever talk to people without collecting data and putting it in the database and more important than anything, set the next point of contact. Because when you talk to people, you need to call them again tomorrow or in a week or in a month or in a year. But if you don't set that next point of contact, you lose the opportunity to close a deal. You right. literally do. That's incredible. So it, it, there's a couple of questions. They're both environmental. So what I'm hearing you say is you don't care what happens in the environment. Follow your process. People will buy and sell because there's a there's a question. Do you expect a second phase of the virus? And then there's another question about pricing in the next one, three, or five years. But it, what I'm hearing, um, correct me if I'm wrong, stay in your process and systems methodology. And that's the whole Absolutely, order. and that's and I, it's not true that I don't care about the environment. I care totally, but that's the point. If you're paying attention, you adapt and grow through whatever whatever you got to deal with. I okay. said very clearly, you need to be texting more than calling. You need to be talking to people more than you ever talked to them. You need to put an hour into your command. And all of that's because of what the devil's been going on. So I'm very clear yeah. what's going on. But I am not going to back off of the core 20% of how we make money. You make contact with people. You have appointments with people you have clients that you have property for sale or you're showing them property and you get fully executed contracts. And if you do those four things, you're going to survive and thrive when others are losing. Yep. And that's what you got to do. And what the virus has caused is we're contacting people differently. We're having appointments differently, but we're still doing contacts, appointments, clients, and contracts, right? That's it. It's good. That's rather to the point. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it is. It's all about work. You know, it's work. And I'm very clear that when I'm willing to work harder than my competition is, I'm going to beat them. There's nothing trick. There's nothing super smart about how you succeed in business. You just work hard. You just right. work hard. And when you know what the work you should be doing is, then you just do that and you do it really hard and you wake up and you win. And you, you, you earned your scars. I mean, you, you lost everything, right? Yep. Lived in yep. a garage, had two kids, lived in a garage, getting back on our feet. And we had two goals that first year. One was to buy a new home and we bought that in July of 93. And the second goal was to be in the top 10 in the board of realtors. Tallahassee's not a big place. There were 1,100 agents. And we were number nine at the end of the year. And all the realtors were going, who are these people? Where did they come from? And the end of the second year, we were number one in the market. And we haven't looked back. That's right. And by the way, I had no money. So what do you think, what do you think we did? We talked to people. 
We talk to people. Rebecca and I, our goal every day, I mean, this is before KW, and this is before, obviously, Bold, but our mindset was, after four years in the business in Miami, we were very clear that the more people we talked to, the more business we would do. So we really understood the business basics. And when you understand the business basics, it's always about performing the basics well. And yeah. we, we talked to people, we had something to say, we had the four questions we're gonna ask people, and we would collect that data and set the next point of contact. And we were very clear about that. So when we went to Tallahassee, we saw that the brokerages dominated, there were no agent teams, none, zero. Now this is going back a ways, right? But there were none. And we knew that if Rebecca and I harnessed our knowledge after four years in the business, and Miami was a very competitive market, it was a difficult market. And we stepped into this kind of a sleepy little market. We said, well, we're gonna scorch the earth here. And that's what we did. And right now, you can scorch the earth where you are because your competitors, a bunch of them, are sitting back. And they're worried and they're afraid. And that's when you take territory. And that's what Gary sees and that's what Keller Williams is doing right now. Our competitors are just terrified. Yep. Terrified. Realogy just sold off $400 million of bonds against the debt they already have. Ooh, I didn't know that. Yeah, almost half a billion dollars of new debt to refinance old debt. <laughs> wow. And this is after in March, the president of Realogy took a 90% pay cut and all of his direct reports took a 50% pay cut. You think people aren't scared over there? Oh my God. He said it. He said it. Oh my God. Yep. Oh my gosh. Okay. Keith, you want to say something? I have just one. And uh, Steve Cooper put up a good question. And it was basically when you talk about doing a video weekly, are you talking about a listing, about the market? Give us just a few ideas you're speaking about. Absolutely. Well, number one, if you haven't spoken clearly and loudly through print marketing or some other marketing tool to your database about COVID-19, you, you need to have that conversation. So you do a short little video, by the way, none of your videos should be longer than two and a half minutes. And they need to have something to say. You gotta have a message, it doesn't have to be a big time message. You gotta have a message and you gotta, you gotta make them laugh. If you can't make them laugh, they don't wanna see it again. It, you know, when, when you make people laugh, they get a shot of endorphin, it makes them feel good. So when they see you have another video, it makes them wanna, wanna watch it again. And if every time you make them laugh a little bit, they'll wanna watch your next video. And then when they get used to the quality of the content is high, then they'll watch them whether you make them laugh or not. But until you get them hooked on the content, you need to make them laugh. And I'm not kidding, this is how it works. If you read the research that uh, YouTube's done on videos, that's exactly how it works. And keep them between one and a half and two and a half minutes. Make them laugh and have something to say. So uh, right now, the first one you ought to do if you haven't done any would be, uh, you send out an email and it says, hey guys, uh, I've been watching what's happening and I've decided I need to step up and educate y'all better about real estate and COVID-19. So I shot a little video, please click here, check it out. I'd love to get feedback too, so give me some feedback. So you do a little two and a half minute video on COVID-19, how buyers and sellers can get the transaction done while keeping safety as a first priority. Now you do your little video, you do your little video about the buyers are gonna uh, meet via Zoom call with the agent, they're gonna do the consultation, they'll get a list of properties, the buyer will be looking at videos. Uh, then when we go and look at the property, you're gonna have gloves, you're gonna have boots, you're gonna wash our hands, we're gonna do the property tour. When we leave, I'm gonna take those from you and exit those and get to dispose of them properly. Uh, we're gonna stay six to 10 feet apart at all times and we'll talk outside in the front yard, but we're not gonna be in the conference room at all, yada, 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 right? Our sellers were having uh, very controlled appointments where we say, I want everything open, every door open, every light switch turned on. I want them to come in your home and not have to touch anything. And they're gonna be told in the comments, please go through the home quickly and efficiently and try not to touch anything. But once they leave, we're gonna go through and wipe down every doorknob, every handle, every countertop because we can't trust that the, that the buyers and the agent did that, right? So you gotta educate them on what you're doing about it. 
this is the whole thing about going to restaurants right now. If people think that the restaurant is doing a good job following the CDC guidelines about keeping us safe if we're going to eat in their restaurant, they'll come back more often, right? My wife and I were at the dinner last night. We had to stand there and wait for a couple to leave so that there was six feet between us and the, and the, and the place. And we stood there and watched while the wait staff sprayed and wiped the whole table, all the chairs, everything, and brought out wrapped, shrink wrapped uh, uh, utensils and put them down on the table. And I'm sitting there watching, this is a smart operation. These people know how to calm down their customers and get them to come back, right? It, there may be a percentage of the population who doesn't care at all. And then there's that other percentage of the population that if they feel in any way that this business is not protecting me from COVID-19, I am not coming back. In fact, I might not even stay. Right? So it's what, it's what we need to do. So I would do that video. I would do a video um, the next day. Hey guys, you know what I got, or the next week, I got such a good response on that last video, I decided to go into detail. So please check this out. This is my selling your home in the COVID-19 era. I'm going a lot deeper in what we're gonna do than what I discussed in the first video. So please watch this and I'd love to get your feedback. One week later. Hey guys, I did the same thing now for buy side. The video last week got an even bigger response than the first one, so now I did it on the buy side. So please watch this little video about a, being a buyer in the era of COVID-19 in the real estate world. Check it out. One week later. Hey guys, um, I put together a little video. We're doing a lot of consultations now that are on a tool called Zoom. So I shot a little video about Zoom. So I want you to check out my Zoom thing so when you contact me to talk about buying or selling real estate, we're going to meet through Zoom, and I want you to understand how Zoom works. So watch my video, How Realtors Use Zoom. Boom, watch my video. Hey, guys, I got a new listing today. Yep, and it's an amazing property. I shot a, what we call an open house tour, and I'm going to show it to you. I uh, made the video. Please check it out, and I'd love to get your feedback on the video one and the feedback on the property. If you know somebody who might be interested in the property. Check it out, boom. So you just keep rolling with that and at least once a month, y'all are doing a market update. Some agents I know are doing a weekly video market update. Hey guys, Gene here, yep, this week in the current marketplace, we had 129 new listings hit the market. We also had 87 properties go pending and we had 111 closings. A strong, strong week this week in our local market. Uh, the trend lines are actually up in closings, flat in contracts, and listings are going down. So inventory is decreasing. So if you're considering selling, this is a great time to sell because of the low inventory that we have right now. Call me, watch the data, and then you show them charts and graphs and data, right? That's awesome. This is the way you're gonna speak. Think about if you have 800 people in your MET database and you wanna to talk to them face to face every week, you have no other way to do it but video, right? And because they're right now, their, their modality is to watch a lot of video, they're going to watch you on video more than any other chance you've had to get them to watch you on video. But anytime yep. I can talk directly to 100 people, 200, however many click through, 300, 400 people, that's leverage like, like you've not seen. And we're not even talking about strangers because if you post these on YouTube, you'll come up on searches and strangers will be watching your videos. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's great. It cracks that's me. That's a very good thing, baby. Very good thing. And then if you go to command and put, five dollars a week on boosting your videos to the general public who are searching in your area or your price range or your product you're going to get strangers literally leads flowing in at 30 cents to 50 cents to 60 cents each just off a little ten dollar boost a week on your videos that's awesome do it yeah. people it's a geo Woo! i was going to say go. that i hear i hear people say uh, I didn't get that many people to watch my video. There's only like 30 or 40 people. You literally made contact with 30 or 40 people at one time. Yeah. So shut up, send the video. It's 40 yeah. people. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 
Awesome. Videos well, keep living. So if you make them with a, a non timestamp brand, in other words, don't talk about it's you know, March, you know, it's June, don't talk about that. You can have those videos stand for a long time. That's awesome. Okay. Got yeah. run. Thank you, Gene. You're amazing. Nice, nice to see y'all. Yeah, we'll, we'll have you back for sure. I have one word. Work. 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 <laughs> Good. All right, y'all. Would y'all enjoy that? Yeah, head nods. He's pretty awesome. Every time he speaks, I'm like, it, it seems he says simple stuff really directly. And I'm like, oh, yeah, just do that. So uh, we're going to stick with the same format we've had. So every two weeks, we're going to try and bring you a speaker and then a team meeting the following two weeks and uh, keep getting together and trying to bring you value. If there's things that we can do to help you with your business or personally, please send them through because we're constantly looking for content and connections to bring value to you guys. So uh, thank you for being here today and we will uh, circle back in two weeks. Sound good? Head nods, speaking into a vacuum. Love y'all, see you next time. Okay.